My name is Robert Bazell, which is spelled B-A-Z-E-L-L. -L. I'm currently an adjunct professor in molecular cellular and developmental biology department at Yale. And for 38 years, I was the chief science and medicine correspondent for NBC News. I worked at NBC for 38 years. Well, I did for, since I did it for so long, I did a lot of things. I covered more than 4,500 stories. I covered the space shuttle. I covered. And I was one of the first reporters to report on AIDS. I reported on so many other outbreaks. I reported on new developments in cancer research, heart disease, and many other aspects of medicine. I talked about medical uh, cost and reform and insurance, and just about you name it in the area of, of health and science. I covered. One of the wonderful things about being a reporter, at least it was for me, was that there's no such thing as a typical day. Because it varied enormously. Sometimes I would spend weeks uh, in one location covering a very intense story. For instance, recently I covered the uh, terrible earthquake in, in Haiti, and I was in Port au Prince in some very primitive conditions for a long time. I was in Fukushima after the nuclear power plant there was leaking. Uh, sometimes I'd come to the office and do nothing all day, that was fairly rare, but I, a lot of times a story would break somewhere else in the country, or have to make a few phone calls, get a camera to that uh, location in a big hurry, and throw together a story in just an hour or so, and that gets the adrenaline up, but it's very different from traveling a thousand miles or several thousand miles or across the country, across around the world to do a story. I had originally thought I was going to be a doctor, and then I w went to college, and I really didn't like the other pre-med students. I'm not saying anything about <laughs> pre-med students today, but they seem to be not the kind of people I wanted to hang out with. So I got to be very interested in science, and I thought I was going to be a scientist. I was uh, I was an undergraduate major in, bi uh, in biochemistry, and I went off and studied evolutionary biology, and then I got a graduate degree in immunology. And I thought I was going to be a regular bench scientist, but I happened to get an opportunity through a series of coincidences, which is my story, it's not anybody else's story, it's not a guide to what anybody else could do. But I met somebody who worked for Science Magazine, and I had a chance to interview, uh, I, I went to work for Science Magazine, and I got a chance to cover news of interest to scientists. Uh, on Capitol Hill and in the executive branch of government, so this was in Washington, D.C. And I just found the journalism utterly fascinating. It did, uh, very much so, because it's, it's sort of like if you're assigned to another country as a reporter and you don't speak the language, you're at a great disadvantage. And there's a language of science. Of course, it's not as much as a different, like, completely different language from English. But if you speak, if you speak the language, you can get people to open up, and then you can go back to them and say, "Well, now say that in a way that the general public can understand you." In a lot of ways, it's not. What you're doing is you're reporting on a community, and if I'm reporting on, say the community city council meeting in, Na in New Haven as a community. Uh, science is a community or a series of interacting communities and so what I'm doing as a representative of a traditional news media organization is I'm going into that community and I'm saying to the rest of the country or the rest of the world what it is they're doing. So there's a, there's a lot of similarities. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated by science reporting or medical reporting because it involves some complexity but it's not a complexity that can't be learned. And some of the best science reporters who are working today were not trained as scientists. They were trained to be good writers or good thinkers in other ways. And that can, is certainly a good path to being a science journalist. The best well, I tried to make a living. <laughs> I didn't have any grand goals. I tried to be as good at it as I could, and I, I hope I was. Well, there's no similar career path in life, but for young people who are interested in journalism today of any kind, it's, we all know that it's undergoing just seismic changes. The traditional uh, newspapers, the traditional newscasts are just uh, uh, melting away, and, and in their place there's internet sites, but it doesn't mean that there isn't a place for journalism. There are a lot of really terrific blogs and some very good reporting that's going on in science. So and my advice, if you want to do it, 
is find an outlet for what you want to write or what you want to do as a documentary film producer and get it produced. And don't worry about it that you're gonna, whether you're trying to make a lot of money at the beginning because you won't. But if you really love it, uh, there, it is still possible. Uh, my, I'm really convinced that even though there is this tsunami of change in journalism, it, there, there is no lack of opportunity for people who are interested in it, and there's no lack of need for society to have good journalists.